In this video, we'll take a look at some extremely simple things that you can do to make the Cycles viewport incredibly responsive so that you can work fast even on the most tier inducingly feeble excuse for a computer that you may have been unfortunate enough to get stuck with. We won't change any render settings because I want the viewport result to match the final result. And this might make me sound like a bit of a madman, but I've got another video planned which is dedicated to improving render speeds by up to a whopping 1000 times with no loss in fidelity. So keep your eyes peeled for that one. The first thing we'll look at is the importance map setting, which you can find in the world section of the properties panel. Set sampling to manual and map resolution as low as you can get it without producing any fireflies. This will speed up how quickly Cycles viewport starts when you initially turn it on and then how quickly it updates when you load new HDRIs or when you make changes to the world shader node tree. We already covered it in the video popping up in the top right hand corner, so watch that for a full detailed explanation. Turn off overlays if you can do without them. These can have a massive impact on the responsiveness of the viewport, even if they're not showing much, for example just the grid, as we can see here. If you don't need to modify geometry inside of a geometry node tree, but you are importing geometry using an object info node, always make sure that you check the as instance checkbox, and that will ensure that if you're instancing a lot of objects, the viewport will remain responsive. The fewer pixels being rendered, the faster the viewport is going to perform. So set this as small as the current task will allow. For example, if you're setting up lighting, then you're going to need to see the full scene. So in that case, the best options are reduce the viewport size or change the viewport pixel size using the setting found in the performance area of the render settings. Setting this to two will mean the 3D viewport will display four times less pixels and therefore render four times faster. The higher the value, the faster the viewport will complete rendering, but the more pixelated the result will be. Generally, two is good. If you're on a pants computer, then auto may already be setting this to two for you. Alternatively, if you're working on shading, then you don't need to see all of the other objects in the scene. So you can instead reduce the number of pixels by setting a render region. Press Ctrl B and then draw a box around the object you're currently working on. And then you can zoom in and out and pan around as you would normally to change what's visible inside that render region or you can just draw another box. When you're finished, press Ctrl Alt B and that will remove the render region. And this will also work in camera mode and viewport mode. The next option is to consider having a simplified scene in which to create shaders. It should consist of nothing more than a ground plane and a HDR because this reduced number of objects and indirect lighting will make the viewport fast even without all of the previously mentioned techniques. And the, the added benefit of this workflow is that your shaders will remain consistent in different scenes because you've set them all up using a, a single familiar lighting environment. If you can't be bothered to copy and paste between a dedicated shader setup scene, you could instead select the ground plane, uh, lights, and the object you want to work on, and then just press the forward slash on the numpad to enter isolation mode. As before, this reduced number of objects will allow you to get the fastest performance even without reducing the size of the 3D viewport or increasing the size of the pixels. When you finish, just press the forward slash again and that will take you back to the full scene. Always ensure in the camera settings that you've always got pass apart out turned up to one because depending on how much space you've got visible outside of the camera in the viewport, this can often double your viewport render speeds. And finally, if you've got a lot of identical objects in the scene, always make sure you use instances. You can create instances using a number of different techniques. You've got particle hairs, You've got collection instances.
geometry node instances using uh, instance on points node. Make the object a child of another object. And then on the parent object, you can set the instancing option to either vertices or faces. One thing to bear in mind though, is if you use Alt D, a lot of people think that is an instance. It's only a partial instance, so it won't offer the same benefits as above. Although it is still better than copies made with Shift D. But wherever you can, always use full instances using the aforementioned techniques. And that's all I've got. So if you've got any additional suggestions, stick those in the comments below so that it benefits everybody. If you'd like to support the channel and also gain an excellent knowledge of the fundamentals of geometry nodes, then check out the EV Huge Ocean Part 2 course. It's available from 3d-illusions.co.uk. You can watch part one for free here on YouTube. Uh, part one concentrates on setting up the ocean using the ocean modifier and setting up the shaders. And then part two is entirely geometry nodes. So, I hope it's useful and I'll see you next time.